Hi everyone, this is Neo from the Overclocker magazine. So today I'm going to bring you the Adrock B550 Tai Chi motherboard review. So the thing is about this B550 Tai Chi motherboard is that it's actually supposed to be the little brother to the X570 Tai Chi naturally. However, if you look at a lot of the features that are on this motherboard, it actually does better. For instance, I do know the power circuitry here, or the power delivery mechanism is actually better than that of the X570, at least component wise. So the parts of this motherboard that are actually more or rather superior to the X570 also come in the form of the 2.5G LAN. So if you recall, the uh, X570 Tai Chi only had a one gigabit uh, Ethernet controller. So this is a 2.5G Ethernet controller courtesy of the Intel i225V. So since it's a B550 chipset motherboard, it doesn't natively support Pizza Express 4.0. Now that doesn't mean that you cannot have a card running here or a graphics card or whatever it may be running at Pizza Express 4.0. The thing is that functionality actually comes from the CPU rather than the chipset, which is very different from the X570, which actually does have Pizza Express 4.0 support on the chipset itself. If you are able to install a Ryzen CPU or what have you, which has 20 PCI Express lanes from the CPU itself, this motherboard will allow you to then use this, what uh, Asbrock terms the Hyper M2 socket. So, and it's Hyper because it's PCI Express 4. If you plug your PCI Express SSD in this socket, then you'll obviously be using the PCI Express lanes uh, from the CPU. This motherboard also allows you to split the remaining 16 lanes in two over these two sockets, over these two slots over here. So obviously for crossfire. So this chipset, the B550, supports a maximum of eight uh, serial ATA ports. And I think this motherboard actually maxes out because it actually does have eight of them. Obviously, there may be some considerations that you have to make if you have to populate particular PCI Express slots or uh, M.2 sockets, which means that you might have to sacrifice some of your SATA ports. Oddly enough, for such a high-end board, at least you only have six fan headers. I would have appreciated a little bit more, but six still works for me and it should still work for more people, for most people, rather. Then you have the typical debug uh, LED here, it's reset power. You have clear CMOS here and you also have clear CMOS at the back here. I think that's pretty redundant. I would have liked to see something like a safe boot or something like that. But this is the standard Tai Chi layout. So it's not that this motherboard is missing anything that other boards have. I'm just looking for a little bit more innovation when it comes to what ASRock is offering here. This backplate serves two purposes. In addition to just holding these LED, this LED bar here at the perimeter of the motherboard, it actually serves as a heat sink for the rear SMDs just beneath the power circuitry. Okay, so it actually does have a function outside of just perhaps looking cool and, I don't know, just giving some structural rigidity to the board. Overall, a pretty solid board. I mean, it's nothing you haven't seen from ASRock in terms of aesthetics. You know, it still looks pretty cool. And yeah, I definitely do like the RGB lighting and it is programmable and configurable. Oh. The one thing that kind of sucks is that you cannot use polychrome in the BIOS anymore for some reason that feature has been taken out, but you can still use it within Windows. So when it comes to the BIOS here, the, it's the typical ASRock BIOS that you've grown accustomed to. The only thing is there are some things, there are some features here which seem to be confusing. For instance, you can set CPU frequency in two different in two different places or in two different ways rather and that can tend to be a bit confusing and that goes too for voltage settings as well i don't know why it necessarily has to be this way i would have preferred just a single place where i know that this is set here and not in multiple places however it may not be a major issue to most people because once you've figured it out you know how to use it regarding other motherboard features or properties rather particularly in the ueif this motherboard just happens to be very finicky with the memory I had, okay? So while I could obviously post and I think very verify like 4,600 megatransactions per second on the DRAM, I couldn't get that to be stable, you know, whereas I could on a competitor motherboard that was fairly simple, okay? But on this one, for some reason, I just couldn't. I'm not sure if it's just 
forward compatibility with the particular DRAM that I had, or it's something more intrinsic to how the board is actually laid out or designed. Having said that, Adfrog does claim on the website that this motherboard does support uh, DDR5200. However, I looked at the QVL and there was no verification or any kit validated above 4000 uh, MTs, right? MTs a second. But nonetheless, your luck will vary. I don't know if you have the same memory I have, but yeah, you may be able to go further because, I mean, why would they claim it if it's not something that's actually possible? So regarding how I, or rather what I think about this motherboard, it's a pretty standard Tai Chi motherboard, okay? It's got nothing that's going to blow you away or anything that's going to be like, oh wow, this is a new feature. It's the standard stuff. The surprising bit is that you get all these, what I would say, premium features in a budget, on a budget chipset board. And $300 does seem like a lot of money, particularly for a B550, right? However, ASRock is still charging way less than their competitors for the equivalent feature set. So in that alone, this is probably the strongest board I know of when it comes to value for money. As an overall user experience, I mean, hey, it's a standard board. Once you've set it up right, you'll pretty much be happy with it. Thus, again, the little things that were taken out of the board or the UEFI, like the ability to update right directly from the internet, right within the BIOS, that was taken out and as I mentioned earlier, the polychrome ability was taken out, right, or the functionality. Oh, what else? And the peculiar layout of the BIOS, like it's not my kind of thing. However, aesthetically, I'm pretty happy with this board. I think it looks kind of nice. It, it's missing some of the heft that makes the competitor motherboard seems so premium. I don't know what it is, very choice of materials, but nonetheless, you can tell that this is a, actually a high-end board. So you would think that there would be some little bit of difference in gaming performance or synthetic performance between this and the X570. No, there actually isn't. These boards are within a margin of error and literally the numbers that you're going to see, depending on where I put these numbers in, they're basically the same as what you would get on an X570. So if you have some concerns about performance, choosing this chipset over X570, there just simply isn't any difference, or at least not any difference that I can appreciate or that I recorded. This is a pretty solid board. I mean, I think it's nice, you know. Like I said, for $300, if you, if you have $300 only to spare and you wanted to build like a high-end AMD gaming machine, why not go for this one? You know, uh, it has everything that any other motherboards, even the ones that cost more than this one, have. Okay, and this one does it at a much cheaper price. Like I said, it's Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, 2.5G LAN, you know, um, a Hyper M.2, Ultra M.2. You've got shielding here, a very good uh, power delivery system, or a competent one at the very least. You have DDR5200 support. I'll put that in, yeah, supposedly 5200 support. You have debug LED. I mean, I've gone over all of this stuff and which other motherboard can seriously give you all of this, all of these features for this price. And I'm telling you for that reason alone, if I were to build like a high-end gaming system or based on the AM4 platform, yeah, I would probably choose this motherboard over many X570 boards. Right. I mean, the, the only other X570 board that I like is an overclocking one, which is a mini ITX board. But out of all the ATX offerings, why not this one? So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this one. Probably the most solid offering I've come across so far. That said, remember to share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the flip side. Peace.